Welcome to the underground, the Steel City Underground, the black and gold standard for Pittsburgh Steelers coverage. Now, here's your host, Terry Fletcher. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Steel City Underground WTF podcast. My name is Terry Fletcher, and we are at week four. Yes, the Steelers had a bye this week, not their doing. As you know, there was a COVID breakout in Tennessee, and as of this recording, they actually had somebody else test positive, which isn't really good for them because you have to have a certain number of days that you test negative, and then they're playing the Bills next. So I don't know what's going on in Tennessee, but I'm glad that our guys are nowhere near that. So in saying that, I was a little frustrated having to take a bye week four uh, and then having to play 13 weeks straight. I laugh sometimes when I see some of the posts on social media saying, oh, we did this with no problem and we took it to the Super Bowl in uh, 2004. People, we have a 38-year-old awesome quarterback. I love Ben, but that was a long time ago. So let's hope that it works out fine. He's rested because he didn't play last year. And now he's back to hopefully uh, where he is close to where he wants to be. But let's get started with the WTF moments around the league over the week four. So Thursday night football, Jets versus Broncos. So talk about an underachieving game. Do you ever notice that Thursday night seems to be like the token game? You're thinking, okay, do I really want to interrupt my week for this? But I love football, so yes, we do. But still, Jets versus Broncos. And when they do the promos, you're like, I'm not so sure that's something I want to do. But here we are. So now the Broncos won. Jets are now 0-4 for the second season in a row. I'm not sure how Adam Gay still has a job. That's my WTF moment. Also, there is a injury with uh, Sam Darnold. So now Flacco will start, they said, coming into week five. Here's something funny about that. I don't know if you realize this or not, that Joe Flacco had a job. But the only way I realized it, because they just don't talk about him anymore, is the fact that when they panned to Darnold doing something, Joe Flacco had one of the tablets that they use, those Surface tablets, uh, on the field. And I was like, and they, and his name was on the back of his jersey. I was like, oh, there's Flacco. Last time I saw him, he was on the other side, on the Broncos uh, as a backup, starting then went to backup. So that had to be odd. But I guess he's starting this week, so we'll see what happens. They're not supposed to get Le'Veon back until Le'Veon Bell back until after. Uh, week five. So I don't know what he's thinking, but I wonder if he regrets his decision. I would think so, even though he wouldn't say it publicly. So Tampa Bay versus Los Angeles Chargers. And I have to tell you, it's still hard for me to say that. But Brady picked six to a rookie, Davis, who gave him the middle finger to the fans. And I was like, is he kidding right now? I am positive he will be fined because no matter what, every single network picked that up. And so when they did the replay, And I'm sure he'll be fined. It's network TV, rookie. You need to make sure you're careful with that. But the Chargers were up 17 at the half, and then Brady came back with five touchdowns for the 38-31 win. It pains me to say that, but you just can't count them out. You just can't, even at 43 years old. So some of the, uh, the fun stuff that was happening in the middle of the field now, this was on Red Zone, so we ne- nobody got to see it until after, but you have to laugh at Andrew, C- Andrew Cicliano, who runs that on NFL Network, because he said, oh, we're going to bring it to you in its entirety. That's his favorite saying. So here's what happened. In the New York Giants-Rams game, Jalen Ramsey and Golden Tate were punching each other after the game, walked to midfield, took off helmets, and just started punching each other. So just so you know, <laughs> the WTF moment So you sit there and think, guys, social distancing. I mean, everybody's getting fined for even no masks. What are you doing? So the New York is now 0-4, but we thought it was about the game. Oh, no. Apparently, Ramsey is the father of Tate's nieces, but ended that relationship with Tate's sister last year to date a Las Vegas dancer. I love, you know, dirt sometimes. It's just so funny. And so then something ensued when things were said. So just, you know, sit on that for a second. And if you feel like you need to go find the National Enquirer, that's what happened on the midfield. So I just thought that was kind of a WTF. Really, guys, take it outside. So the Browns beat the Cowboys. But I have to tell you, this game, (laughs) it's hard to watch because it was 49-38. Yes, Browns beat the Cowboys 49-38. 
But Baker Mayfield, I have somebody I was playing against, only had 15 fantasy points. So your team score is 49, but you only get 15. Well, he pitched it to Jarvis Landry, a ball, and, uh, and then he threw it to Odell Beckham, who had over 50 points because they just kept throwing him the ball, which is what they need to. But does anybody ever think that maybe Baker Mayfield's commercials are just a little bit better than his play? Anyway, also on an interesting stat on the game, their starting running back, Chubb, he left with an injury only after six carries. Well, they ended up rushing for 307 yards total, and that's most in any NFL game in two years. So you tend to wonder, okay, what's Chubb doing if they're not getting those kinds of numbers with him in the game? Anyway, how's that carries out for those of you that have Chubb on your fantasy team? Make sure you take care of that. So you know my feeling over Drew Brees. I just, I think he's overrated, but okay, they won 35-29 over the Lions. But Detroit has now lost six in a row where they have the lead by 10 or more points at any time in the game. So can we please stop calling Matthew Stafford elite now? I hear it all the time. Oh, this is his year. Oh, he's really elite. He's definitely a top five or even top 10 quarterback. Guys, no, he isn't. You need to move on from that. It will be interesting to see what kind of job he has moving forward. Raiders versus Bills. Okay. John Gruden, they're panning on you every time. You've been fined now over $200,000. Your team was fined also several hundred thousand dollars. Wear the mask or get one of the Andy Reid Kansas City face shields. Wear your mask. You, you keep being fined. Just do it. So, and if you don't, I think the league needs to suspend him and find the team a million dollars. Put a face shield on it. Look what happened with Tennessee. I don't know if it's going to work. I don't know about masks right now because I have my own, you know, medical opinion on it since I'm a medical professional. But the point is, those are the rules. So use those rules. The rate, the bills won. And again, you need to really follow those rules. Texans lost and this is going to be their 0-4 record and they lost to the 0-3 Vikings. That's just painful. That's like this weekend on one of my leagues, I lost to my daughter who was 0-3 over by 100 points. It was painful. But again, they had a chance to tie it at the end. Well, their coach, their manager was fired on Monday. And he was also, don't forget, he's the coach and GM. That's Bill O'Brien. And remember, he was the one that traded their best player, wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins, to Arizona and their 2021 first and second round picks that now belong to Miami. I mean, WTF, you know, what took so long Texans to get rid of him? He might be a nice guy. He's a very heated sometimes, according to what Tony Dungy was saying at, after one of the games. But you go 0-4, you, you're playing terrible. You have a, a moment where you didn't even know where the ball was during the season. And then you trade away your, your best player. You give away picks. And you just can't get it together. And not to just to that, but coaching and GM, oh my gosh. I felt bad for J.J. Watt. I know everybody on Steelers or a lot of people on Steelers want him to come over. Not really sure who would we, we would replace him with because I love having Watts on the field. They're, they're awesome. But in his post-presser, he was giving one-word answers. He was so upset, and I don't blame him. To come back after some of the adversity he's had to deal with and have to deal with this is just really tough on him. So in the Sunday night football game, so Philly got their first win at San Francisco and a player named Ayuk, <laughs> he is a Philly wide receiver. So Wentz throws him a lateral who then he then throw then leaps over a defender, this is Ayuk, for the touchdown. But remember, if you hit throw a lateral as a quarterback, <laughs> there's no fantasy points. It's called now rushing yards for the person who actually made the touchdown. So, or, or went forward. I, I know I bring in fantasy a lot, but it's funny to me because a lot of people don't know the rules and I could hear people yelling in some of my leagues on people that <laughs> I was sitting next to. And so it was just funny to me, but they finally got their, their first win for one, two and one. So we play them next and I'll come up with that later, but oh my gosh. So Steelers COVID Tennessee. Okay. So we now play them week eight. We had to take a four a week four by, as you know, 18 people in the Tennessee organization have COVID. So here's what happens. We now play the Ravens and Baltimore week eight, but their by the Ravens is week seven. And then we have to play 13 straight. And we also play Tennessee now the week that the Ravens are off. So they switched everything. So we go to Tennessee the Ravens get to rest while we're playing a team that broke protocol 
And then they play us. Yeah. Talk about just absolute BS. I'm sorry. I am not happy about this at all. And I really hope that, and Jerry Jones actually with Dallas Cowboys, he came out not just in defense of the Steelers, but he said, this is ridiculous. And if we find out who broke protocol and who didn't act responsibly and follow the rules, then not only should they lose some draft picks, but there should be some severe penalties because other teams have been able to uh, work through it and work within the rules. So I have to agree with that. It just, it's, it's really just disheartening and I'm sure I'll get over it at some point with more wins, but I just think that there's some unfairness going on when you have a team that has been great and not done anything. And then you have an organization that continues to have positives and they're not even telling us what's going on there. So one of the interesting stats over the weekend, which I think is a good WTF moment, most winners on Sunday had over 30 points scored. So you really had to score some points to be able to get your win. Now let's go to Monday night football. Oh my gosh. So This was a little bit of a mess. Remember that we had Cam Newton tested positive for COVID. So the game for Kansas City against uh, New England was then moved to Monday night because nobody else tested positive. And so they were, so then Brian Hoyer was going to be the starter, which you're like, okay, he's been at that organization forever. And so, but he had to wait it out to see what was going on. But then they had to fly the day. So they had to fly the day of the game. This is the, Uh, Patriots to um, get to Kansas City. So that was, I mean, that's definitely a problem. But everybody played so terrible. I just, I mean, it was on both sides of the ball. So Brian Hoyer, oh my gosh, he just, he looked terrible. But the first problem, one of the WTFs, was McCourty misses an interception thrown by um, Mahomes through his hands. And then this is one of the really bad things. Mahomes fumbles. And the refs blew a whistle. Oh my gosh. You want to see Bill Belichick totally run down the sidelines screaming at the refs. He was so mad. And then Hoyer, this is probably the biggest boneheaded what what WTF moment ever. Not knowing how many timeouts you have left. He takes a sack with 20 seconds left before the half. It's only 6-3. No timeouts. And they are up at in the red zone. They're basically within, I think, seven yards. And then it pushes them back, but they're still in field goal range. If they kick a field goal, they can tie it to be 66. And then you see on replay when they brought it back after commercial, he actually tried to call timeout. You're like, dude, know what's going on in the field. I just, I mean, if he would have played even a little better than that, they wouldn't have called Stidham, number three, in their rookie draft pick. He comes in. He throws his first touchdown and everybody's like, oh my gosh, he's so great. And then he throws two ugly picks. So they lose 26 to 10, but Kansas City, they did not play well. I mean, you have um, Patrick Mahomes played probably one of the worst games I've ever seen him play. And so within a pick there, I think he threw another one. And then the fumble, I just, it was just really bad. If they had Cam Newton, which now, you know, people are like giving him a lot of hard, giving him a hard time where he caught it. They would have been just so much in a better position. And the refs really helped out this game to allow Kansas City to win. I'm not saying Kansas City didn't, in the last few, you know, quarter take it because of how bad the Patriots played, but it was just bad on both sides. But that one call where Patrick Mahomes um, fumbled, it was like the refs were like, oh, no, 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 he can't fumble. He's, he's, you know, he's the half a billion dollar guy. So if you had a chance to go review that, look at it and you'll be like, you've got to be kidding me. So here's one for, <laughs> for Green Bay over Atlanta. So Green Bay wins 30 to 16 over Atlanta to go 4 0, whatever. Uh, you know, they're going to anoint Rodgers as the second coming, as you know. But here's something kind of arrogant. And I realize there's arrogance in every quarterback, but he just takes the cake sometimes. So he says in a post interview after the game, He says, in his worst day, he's better than some quarterback's best day. Well, we're liking ourselves this week, aren't we, Aaron? What WTF? You know, tone it back a bit. At least be humbled. You have a job. But because some people have said that you're kind of on the decline. But just, it was just really kind of a, I don't know, an uncalled for statement. I just thought he was out there. So we are on to Philly. This is Pittsburgh. And our 3-0 Steelers take on the 1-2-1 Philadelphia Eagles. Our number one ranked defense against their number 11. But here is an interesting stat. And this to me was my, and this will be my last WTF moment for this week. But it's NFL.com says that we have the number 30th ranked offense 
going against the number 26th ranked offense in this game. And that actually surprises me. But I like our chances. Ben against Wentz, our number one defense. I think we're going to be good to go. So with that, everybody, make it a great day and a great week. And until next time on the WTF Steel City Underground Podcast. Thanks for listening. We would like to thank you for listening and remind our listeners to follow us on social media and our website, www.steelcityunderground.com.